Just last month, a magnitude 6.3 earthquake destroyed sections of Christchurch, New Zealand. More than 100 people died. One year before that, an 8.8 .8 trembler struck Chile. More than 500 died. Today's massive earthquake off the coast of Japan registered a massive 8.9. Though separated by thousands of miles, each of these quakes occurred on the Ring of Fire, a 25,000-mile line along the Pacific Rim that is the most geologically active place on the planet, with more than 450 volcanoes. Most of the world's earthquakes occur along this line. The culprit, the Pacific Plate, the floor beneath the ocean, is constantly shifting. It's a very large system. And second, it's moving pretty fast. The Pacific Plate is moving under Japan at about 10 centimeters a year. Right. Which is a pretty high rate. Trillions of tons of Earth moving four inches a year is a lot. An irresistible force meeting an unmovable object. And you do that for 100 years, you got, you're talking about a big, big amount that you got to Compensate snap for. back. And when it pops back, it produces the earthquake and the tsunami because it's doing it under the ocean. Japan's level of seismic activity is about 10 times that of California. The country has spent billions trying to make itself earthquake proof. Today's video showed buildings in Shinjuku swaying but not collapsing. The U.S. has started to install shock absorbers under buildings as well, but has some catching up to do. Nobody's ever prepared for this kind of earthquake, but but uh, compared to Japan, probably we're uh, not nearly as prepared as Japan. Scientists say Alaska and the Pacific Northwest are the most vulnerable to an earthquake comparable to the one that struck Japan today. Along the ring of fire, it's only a matter of time. Harry Smith, CBS News, New York.